Thank you for joining the acting class at Rowan College of South Jersey for their final exam, a play entitled God of Carnage. God of Carnage was written by Yasmina Reza and is the story of a playground altercation between two 11-year-old boys, which brings together two sets of parents from Brooklyn who meet to discuss and resolve matters from this altercation. The play starts out with diplomatic niceties, but as the meeting progresses and rum flows, tensions emerge and the gloves come off and, well, I'll leave it to the actors to tell you the rest of the story. Tonight, Brittany Jones and Robert Kinzel portray Veronica and Michael Novak, and Brianna Lynx and Ian Bowles Price will play Annette and Alan Raleigh. Thank you again for supporting our theater program at Rowan College of South Jersey, and now God of Carnage. So, this is our statement. You'll be doing your own, of course. At 5.30 p.m. on the 3rd of November in Cobble Hill Park, following a verbal altercation, Benjamin Raleigh, 11, armed with a stick, struck our son Henry Novak in the face. This action resulted in, apart from the swelling of the upper lip, the breaking of two incisors, including injury to the nerve in the right incisor. Uh, <laughs> armed. Armed? You don't like armed. What shall we say, Michael? Uh, furnished, equipped? Furnished with a stick, is that all right? Furnished, yes. <laughs> furnished with a stick. Furnished. The irony is we've always regarded Cobble Hill Park as a haven of security, unlike Whitman Park. Right, we've always said Cobble Hill Park, yes. Whitman Park, no. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you for coming. There's nothing to be gained from getting stuck down some emotional cul-de-sac. We should be thanking you, we should. I don't see that any thanks are necessary. Fortunately, there is still such a thing as the art of coexistence, isn't there? <laughs> Which the children don't appear to have mastered. Well, at least not ours. Yes, not ours. What's going to happen to the tooth with the affected nerve? Oh, we don't know yet. They're being cautious about the prognosis. Apparently, the nerve hasn't been totally exposed yet. Only a little bit's been exposed. Yes, some of it's been exposed, but some of it's still covered. That's why they've decided not to kill the nerve just yet. Yeah, they're trying to give the tooth a chance. Well, obviously, it would be best to avoid endodontic surgery. Well, yes. So there will be an interim period while they give the nerve a chance to recover. In the meantime, they'll be giving him ceramic crowns. Whatever happens, you can't have implants before you're 18. No. Permanent implants can't be fitted until you're finished growing. Of course. I hope. I hope it all works out. Yes, I hope so. <sighs> Those tulips are gorgeous. They're from the little Korean deli up on Smith Street. You know the one at the end? Oh, yes. They come every morning direct from Holland. $40 for a bunch of 50. Oh, really? You know the one at the end? Yes, yes. You know, Henry really didn't want to identify Benjamin. Oh, no, he didn't. Impressive sight, that child face bashed in, teeth missing still, refusing to talk. I can imagine. Well, he also didn't want to identify, her, and identify him for fear of looking like a tattletale in front of his friends. You have to be honest, Veronica, it was nothing more than bravado. Yes, but bravado is a kind of courage, isn't it? That's right. So how... What I mean is, how did you manage to get Benjamin's name? Well, we told him he wasn't helping the child by shielding him. We said to him, if this child thinks he can keep on hitting people with impunity, well, why would he stop? We said to him that if we were this child's parents, we definitely want to be told. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Yes, Murray, go ahead. Right, in today's times. Here, let me read it to you. According to a paper published in The Lancet and taken up yesterday in the Financial Times, two Australian researchers have revealed the neurological side effects of Antril, a hyperintensive beta blocker manufactured at Verbrand's Pharma Laboratories. These side effects range from hearing loss to ataxia. So who the hell is your media watchdog? Yes, it's very goddamn inconvenient. No, what's most inconvenient about it, as far as I'm concerned, is the annual shareholders meeting in two weeks. Do you have insurance contingency to cover litigation? Ah, got it. Oh, and Murray, Murray, ask your PR gal to find out if the story shows up anywhere else. Call me back. Excuse me. Well, so you're uh... a lawyer. What about you? Well, me, I have a wholesale company, household goods. 
And Veronica's a writer. She also works part time in an art history bookshop. A writer. I contributed to a collection on the civilization of Sheba based on the excavations that were restarted at the end of the Ethiopian Eritrean War. And I have a book coming out in January on the Darfur tragedy. So you specialize in Africa? I'm very interested in that part of the world. Do you have any other children? Well, Henry has a nine-year-old sister, Camille, who's furious at her father because her father got rid of the hamster. You got rid of the hamster? Well, yes. You see, this hamster makes the most god-awful racket all night and spends a whole day fast asleep. Henry was in a lot of pain last night, and he was being driven crazy by the noise the hamster was making. And to be honest with you guys, I've been wanting to get rid of it for a long time now. So I said to myself, okay, that's it. I took it out and put it in the street. Thought they loved drains and gutters and all that, but I guess not. You know, kind of just sat there paralyzed on the sidewalk. Well, I mean, they're not domestic animals and they're not wild animals. So I'm not sure where your, their natural habitat is. Dump them in the woods or probably I'm just as unhappy. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure where you're supposed to put them at. You left it outside. He left it there and tried to convince Camille it had run away, but she wasn't having it. Was the hamster gone this morning? Gone, yes. And you, what field are you in? I'm in wealth management. Isn't it all possible, excuse me for putting it so bluntly, that um, Benjamin might apologize to Henry? Well, it'd be good if they talked. He has to apologize, Alan. He has to tell him he's sorry. Yes, yes, of course. But is he sorry? He understands what he's done. He just doesn't understand the implications. He's 11. If you're 11, you're not exactly a baby anymore. Oh, but you're not an adult either. We haven't offered you guys anything. Coffee, tea. Oh, is there any of that cobbler left, Ronnie? It's an extraordinary cobbler. I wouldn't mind an espresso. Just some water. Oh, espresso for me too, sweetie. And bring the cobbler anyway. So what I always say is, we're a lump of potter's clay and it's up to us to fashion something out of it. You know, perhaps it won't take shape till the very end. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Oh, you have to taste this cobbler. Good cobbler is an endangered species. You're right. What is it you sell? Oh, domestic hardware, locks, doorknobs, soldering irons, all sorts of household goods, saucepans, frying pans. Uh, money in that, is there? Well, you know, it's never exactly been a bonanza. It was pretty hard when we started, but if I'm out there every day pushing my product, we survive. At least we're not seasonal like textiles, although we do sell a lot of fondue pots around Christmas time. I'm sure. When you saw the hamster sitting there paralyzed, why didn't you bring it back home? Because I couldn't pick it up. You put it on the sidewalk. I took it out of this cage and sort of tipped it out. I don't like to touch rodents. I don't know who put the cobbler in the fridge. Monica puts everything in the fridge. She won't be told. What's Benjamin said to you, sugar? No, thanks. What's in the cobbler? Apples and pears. Mm. Apples and pears. My own little recipe. It's gonna be too cold, it's a shame. Apples and pears, this is a first. Apples and pears is pretty textbook, but there is a little trick to it. There is? Well, pears need to be cut thicker than apples because pears cook faster than apples. Ah, of course. Oh, wait, she's not telling you the real secret. Let them try it. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's very good. Tasty. Gingerbread crumbs. Brilliant. Well, uh, to be quite honest, I did get it from his mother. Gingerbread. Delicious. Well, at least all this has given us a new recipe. I'd have preferred if it hadn't cost my son two teeth. <laughs> Strange way of expressing it. Not at all. I just... <sighs> <laughs> I have to take this. Yes, Murray, go ahead. No, don't ask for a right of reply. You'll only feed the controversy. Are you insured? Hmm. Hmm. What, what are the symptoms? What is ataxia? Well, what about on a standard dose? How long have you known about this? And all that time you never recalled it? What's the gross? Ah, got it. I see. Alan, do you mind joining us? Yes, yes, I'm coming. Serge, they've known about the risk for two years. An internal report, but it didn't formally identify any undesirable side effects. 
No, they took no precautions. They didn't ensure. Not a word about it in the executive report. Uh, stability problems, impaired motor control skills. In short, you look completely retarded. <laughs> they are grossing $150 million. Blanket denial. Idiot wanted to demand a right of reply. We certainly don't want a right of reply. On the other hand, if, if the story spreads, we can put out a press release, say it's disinformation leaked two weeks before the annual shareholders meeting. He's going to call me back. Okay. Oh, I haven't had lunch. Oh, please, help yourself, help yourself. I have no matter. What were you saying? That it would have been nicer to meet under different circumstances. Oh, right. So the cobbler, it's your mother's? Oh, the recipe's my mother's, but Ronnie made this one. Your mm. mother doesn't mix pears and apples. No. Poor thing has to have an operation. Really? What for? For me. Oh, you're going to insert a rotatable prosthesis made out of polyethylene and metal. She's wondering what's going to be left of it when she's cremated. <laughs> Don't be horrible! She refuses to be buried next to my father. She wants to be cremated and put next to her mother, who's all on her own in Florida. Two urns looking out to the sea, trying to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> We're very touched by your generosity. We appreciate the fact that you're trying to calm the situation down rather than exacerbate it. Frankly, it's the least we can do. Yes. Not at all. How many parents standing up for their children become infantile themselves? If Henry had broken two of Benjamin's teeth, I'm afraid Alan and I would have been a lot more thin-skinned about it. Oh, well, I mean, you would have been the same. Of course you would have. She's right. Not at all certain. Oh, yes, because we all know how easily it could have been the other way around. So... What does Benjamin have to say about all of this? How does he view the situation? He's not saying much. I think he's still slightly in shock. He understands that he's disfigured his playmate? <laughs> no. No, he doesn't understand that he's disfigured his playmate. Why are you saying that? Benjamin understands very well. He understands that he's behaved like a thug. He does not understand that he has disfigured his playmate. You don't care for the word, but... The word is unfortunately accurate. My son has not disfigured your son. Your son has disfigured my son. Come back at five and have a look at his mouth and teeth. Okay, okay, it's temporarily disfigured. The swelling on the lip will go down, and as far for the teeth, take him to the best dentist. I'm prepared to chip in. Well, I mean, that's what the insurance is for. What we would like is for the boys to make up so this sort of thing never happens again. Let's arrange a meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's the answer. Uh, should we be there? They don't need to be coached. Let them do it man to man. Man to man, Alan, don't be ridiculous. Having said that, we don't necessarily have to be there. It'd probably be better if we weren't, wouldn't it? The question isn't whether we should be there or not. The question is, do they want to talk to one another? Do they want to have a discussion? Henry wants to. What about Benjamin? It's no use asking his opinion. But it has to come from him. Benjamin has behaved like a hooligan. We're not interested in what mood he's in. If Benjamin is forced to meet Henry in a punitive context, I don't see that the results would be very positive. Madam, our son is a savage. To hope for any kind of spontaneous repentance would be fanciful. Right, I'm sorry. I have to get back to the office. You'll stay, Annette. You'll tell me what you've decided. I'm no use whichever way you cut it. Women always think you need a man. You need a father, as if they'd be any help at all. Men are a dead weight. They are clumsy and maladjusted. I'm so embarrassed, but I can't stay either. My husband has never exactly been a stroller dad. What a pity. It's lovely taking the baby for a walk, and it lasts such a short amount of time. You always enjoyed taking the children out for a walk, didn't you, Michael? You loved pushing the stroller. Yes, I did. So, what have we decided? Could you come by the house with Henry about 7.30? 7.30, um... What do you think, Michael? Well, honestly... Go on. I think Benjamin ought to come here. Yes, I agree. I don't think it's right for the victim to go, you know, traipsing around. That's right. Well, personally, I can't be anywhere at 7.30. Since you're of no use, we won't be needing you. Well, all the same, it would be best if his father were here. All right, but it can't be this evening. Yes. <clears throat> There's nothing in the executive report, and no risk has been formally established. There's no evidence. Tomorrow? I'm flying to The Hague tomorrow. <laughs> You're working in The Hague? I have a case at the International Criminal Court. The main thing is that the children speak to one another. I'll bring Benjamin here at 7.30 and we can leave them to have their discussion. No, you don't look very convinced. 
Well, if Benjamin is not made aware of his responsibilities, they'll just look at each other like a pair of China dogs. It'll be a catastrophe. What, what do you mean? What do you mean, made aware of his responsibilities? I'm sure your son is not a savage. Of course Benjamin isn't a savage. Yes, he is. Alan, this is absurd. Why say something like that? He's a savage. Well, I mean, how does he explain his behavior then? He doesn't want to discuss it. But he ought to discuss it. He ought to do a number of things. He ought to come here. He ought to discuss it. He ought to be sorry for it. Clearly, you have parenting skills that put us to shame. We hope to improve, but in the meantime, please bear with us. All right, all right. This is idiotic. Please, let's not end up like this. I'm only thinking of him. I'm only thinking of Benjamin. I got the message. Let's just sit down for another couple of minutes. A little more coffee? A coffee. Okay. Then I'll have one too, thanks. Don't worry, Ron, I'll take care of it this time. I see you're a great art lover. Art photographs, uh, to some extent, it's my job. I adore bacon. Ah, yes, bacon, yes. Cruelty, majesty. Chaos, balance. That's right. Is Benjamin interested in art? Not as much as he should be. What about your children? We try. We try to fill in the gaps in the educational system. Yes. We try to make them read. We take them to concerts and exhibits. We're eccentric enough to believe in the soothing powers of culture. And you're right. So, Cobbler, is it a cake or a tart? <laughs> Serious question. I was just thinking in the kitchen. Linzern tort, for example. Is that a tart? Oh, come on, come on. You can't leave that one little slice, pal. Well, cobbler is a cake. The pastry's not rolled out. It's mixed in with the fruit. You really are a cook? I love it. The thing about cooking is you really have to love it. In my opinion, it's only the classic tart that's to say in a pastry base that deserves to be called a tart. So what about you two? Do you guys have any other children? I have a son from my first marriage. So I was wondering, uh, not that it's all important, what started the fight? Henry won't say a single word about it. Henry refused to let Benjamin join his gang. Henry has a gang? He also called Benjamin a snitch. Did you know Henry had a gang? No, that's terrific. <laughs> Why is that terrific? Well, because I had my own gang. Me too. And what does that entail? Oh, there are like five or six kids that follow you around and are ready to sacrifice themselves. Like in Spartacus. Absolutely, like in Spartacus. <laughs> Who knows about Spartacus these days? They use a different model, Spider-Man. Uh, anyway, uh, clearly you know more than we do. Benjamin hasn't been as silent as you implied. And do we know why Henry called him a snitch? Oh, uh, no, sorry, that's a stupid question. First of all, I couldn't care less. Second of all, it's besides the point. We can't get involved in children's quarrels. And it's none of our business. No. On the other hand, what is our business is what unfortunately happened. The violence, that is our business. So, to uh, become head of my own gang when I was 12, I had to fight Bobby Kopecky, who was a lot bigger than me. It was one-on-one -on -one single combat. What are you talking about, Michael? What does that have to do with anything? No, no, you're right. It's got nothing to do with it. We're not discussing single combat. The children weren't fighting. I know, I know. I, I was just suddenly having a flashback. There's not that big a difference. Okay, excuse me, yes there is. There's a very big difference. Well, yeah, there is a very big difference. What? Well, with Bobby Capecchi, we agreed to have the fight. Did you beat the shit out of him? I mean, up to a point. All right! Can we stop talking about Bobby Capecchi? Would you allow me to speak to Benjamin? By all means. Well, I wouldn't want to do it without your permission. Speak to him. What could be more natural? <laughs> Good luck. Stop it, Alan. I don't understand you. Mrs. Novak. Veronica. We don't have to be so formal. Veronica, you are motivated by an educational impulse, which is very sympathetic. If you don't want me to speak to him, I won't speak to him. No, no, speak to him. Read him the riot act. Do what you like. I don't understand why you don't seem to care about this. Ma'am. Oh, Veronica, please. Of course I care. Veronica, <laughs> enormously. My son has injured another child. On purpose. See? That's the kind of comment that gets my back up, obviously on purpose. But that's the one that makes all the difference. The difference between what and what? That's what we're talking about. Our son picked up a stick and hit your son. That's why we're here, isn't it? This is pointless. 
Yeah, she's right. This kind of argument is pointless. Why do you feel the need to slide in on purpose? What kind of message is that supposed to be sending me? Listen, we're on a slippery slope. My husband is desperate about all kinds of other things. I'll come back this evening with Benjamin and we'll let them sort things out naturally. I am not in the least bit desperate. Well, I am. Well, I mean, there's nothing to be desperate about. Yes, there is. Don't make any statement. No comment. No, you can't take it off the market. If you take it off the market, you become responsible. The minute you take Antril off the market, you're admitting liability. If you want to be sued for falsifying the executive report and get shit canned in two weeks, take it off the market. Last year on Parents' Day, wasn't it Benjamin who was in that play? Charlie's aunt. Charlie's we'll talk aunt! About the victims later, Murray. Let's see what the shares do after the annual meeting. He was extraordinary. Yes. We are not going to take it off the market because one or two people are bumping into furniture. Don't make any statement for the time being. Yes, I will call you back. I remember him very clearly in Charlie's Aunt. Do you, do you remember him, Michael? Oh, y yes, yes. Oh my God, I remember him. He was hilarious when he was in drag. Yes. They're panicking. They've got the media up their ass. You have to prepare a press release. Not something defensive. Not at all. On the contrary, go out all guns blazing. You insist that Varenz Pharma is the victim of a destabilization attempt two weeks before its annual shareholders meeting. Where did this paper come from? Why did it fall out of the sky right now? Etc. and so on. Don't say anything about the health problems. Just ask one question. Who is behind this report? Right. You know, they're terrible, these pharmaceutical companies. Profit, profit, profit. You're not supposed to be listening to my conversations. Well, I mean, you're not obliged to have it in front of me. <laughs> yes, I am. I am absolutely obliged to have it in front of you. Not my choice, believe me. They dump any old crap on you without giving it a second thought. Every advance in the therapeutical field comes with its risks as well as benefits. Yes, I understand that. All the same, you know, funny job you have. Meaning? Michael, this has nothing to do with us. Funny job. And what is it you do? Well, I have an ordinary job. And what is an ordinary job? I told you, I sell frying pans. And doorknobs. And toilet fittings and lots of other things. Toilet fittings? Now we're talking. That's really interesting. Alan. What? I'm interested in toilet fittings. Well, why shouldn't you be? How many types are there? Well, two different systems, gravity or pressure assist. I see. It depends on the feed. Well, yes. Well, either the water comes down from above or up from below. Yes. I could introduce you to one of my stock managers who specializes in this kind of thing, if you'd like. However, you would have to leg it all the way out to the caucus. You seem very on top of the subject. Are you intending on punishing Benjamin in any way? You can carry on with this plumbing conversation in a much more appropriate setting. I'm not feeling well. What's the matter? Yes, you look very pale, sweetheart. A little pale, certainly. I feel nauseous. Nauseous? I have some Pepto-Bismol. No, no, it'll be all right. What could we... Coke! Coke's very good. It'll be all right. Walk around a little, take a few steps. Really? You think so? Yes, yes. Um, small steps? Thank you. Give me Surge, will you please? Oh, right, right. Well, ask him to call me back. Ask him to call me back right away. <sighs> Is it good Coca-Cola? I thought it was supposed to be for diarrhea. Not only for that, um, all right? All right. Veronica, if we want to reprimand our child, we'll do it in our own way and without having to account to anybody. Absolutely. What do you mean, absolutely, Michael? I mean, it's their son. They can do whatever they want. It's their I father. don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so, Ronnie? I don't think it's their prerogative. Really? Explain. I'm sorry. Excellent. But don't forget, nothing's been proved. There's nothing definite. Get this straight. If anyone fucks up, Murray is a dead man in two weeks and us with him. That's enough, Alan. That's enough now with the cell phone. Will you please pay attention to what's going on here? Shit! Yes, yes, call me back and read it to me. What's the matter with you? Have you gone nuts shouting like that? Serge heard everything. God, drives me crazy, that cell phone, endlessly. Listen, Annette, I'm already doing you a big favor by being here in the first place. <laughs> Extraordinary thing to say. I'm gonna throw up. No, you're not. You're not going to throw up. Yes, I am. Would you like to use our bathroom? 
No one's forcing you to stay. No, no one's forcing him to stay. I'm feeling dizzy. Stare at a fixed point. Stare at a fixed point, Wolf Wolf. Go away. Leave me alone. She would be better off in a bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom if you want to throw up. Give her some Pepto-Bismol, Ronnie. You don't suppose it could have been the cobbler? It was me yesterday. Don't touch me. Calm down, Wolf Wolf. Please, let's not get worked up about nothing. (laughs) According to my husband, everything to do with house, school, or gardening is my department. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And I understand why. It's deathly. All of it. Deathly. Well, if you think it's so deathly, why have children in the first place? Maybe Benjamin senses your lack of interest. What lack of interest? Well, I mean, you just said... (gasps) 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 Ronnie, go get the dishpan! Go get the dishpan! You shouldn't have gone to the bathroom, Wolf Wolf. This is ridiculous. (gasps) Oh, man, it looks like you still ate most of it up. Well, it was absolutely not the cobbler. It couldn't have possibly been. It's not the cobbler. It's nerves. This is pure nerves. Um, would you like to use the bathroom and... Oh my god, my Kokoshka! Oh my god! Ronnie, give her some Pepto-Bismol! Not now! She can't keep anything down! Where's the restroom? I'll show you. It's nerves. (laughs) It's a panic attack. You're a mom, Annette, whether you want to be or not. I I understand why you feel desperate. You know, what I always say is you can't control the things that control you. Oh, I mean, with me, it's the cervical vertebrae. The vertebrae just, you know... Seizes up. (laughs) What are we going to do about my kokoshka? Well, I would spray it with Mr. Clean. The problem is how to dry it. Or we could sponge it down and put a little bit of perfume on it. Perfume? Use my curls. I never wear it. It'll warp. We could run the hair dryer over it or flatten it out under a pile of books or iron it like they do with money. Oh, my God. I'll buy you another one. You can't find it. It went out of print years ago. I am so sorry. We'll salvage it. Here, let me do it, Ronnie. It's a reprint of the catalog from the 53 London exhibition more than 20 years ago. Oh my God. Go get the hair dryer. Oh, and the car was from the linen closet. Her husband's in the restroom. Well, I mean, he's not naked, is he? Ugh. You know what? There, that's the horse of it. Although the people of the tundra could use a little bit more of a white. Uh, I'll be back in that. Um, feeling better? Yes. Can we spray now? Where's the hairdryer? Uh, he's bringing it when he's finished with it. Okay, we'll wait for him. We'll put the curls on last thing. Okay. Can I use the bathroom as well? Yes, yes, of course. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Oh, it's... Mm. What a nightmare. Horrible. You know what? Tell you what? He better not push me any further. Oh, she's dreadful as well. Not as bad. Oh, she's a phony. A little less irritating. They're both dreadful. And hey, why do you keep siding with them? What What do you mean? I don't keep siding with them. What are you talking about? You keep vacillating, trying to play both ends against the middle. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Going on about your triumphs as a gang leader, telling them they're free to do whatever they want with their child when their child is a public menace. And when a child is a public menace, it's everybody's concern, and I can't believe she puked all over my books. Here, put some on the people of the tundra. If you think you're about to hurl, you go to the proper place. And the fajita. This is disgusting. You know... I was pushing it a little bit with the shithouse systems. Oh no, you were brilliant. <laughs> Good answers, don't you think? Brilliant. The stock manager thing? Brilliant. Oh, God, what an asshole. And what did he call her? Uh, Wolf Wolf. <laughs> That's right, Wolf Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I call her Wolf Wolf. Oh my God, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't mean to be rude. It's so easy to make fun of other people's nicknames. Um, what do we call each other, Michael? Far worse, isn't it? Did you want the hair dryer? Thank you. Thank you. We call each other Darjeeling like the tea. Yeah. It's a little more ridiculous if you ask me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Ronnie, smooth them out. Smooth them out. The poor thing, feeling better? Better. I reacted very badly. I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, not at all. Not at oh, all. I just steamrolled her about my catalog. I can't believe I did that. Turn the page. Stretch it out. Stretch it all the way out. Okay. You're going to tear it. You're right. Uh, he's right. Michael. Michael. Michael, that's enough. It's dry. <sighs> Objects can become ridiculously important half the time. Can't even remember why. 
There we are. Good as new. Uh, so where does Wolf Wolf even come from? How much is that doggy in the window? Oh, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> wolf Wolf. <laughs> I like it. Ours comes from our honeymoon in India. I mean, it's pretty idiotic, really. Shouldn't I go and see how she is? Off you go, Darjeeling. Shall I? Oh, Annette, I was worried about you. Are you feeling better? I think so. If you're not sure, stay away from the coffee table. I left the towel in the bathtub. I wasn't sure where to put it. Perfect. You've cleaned it all up. I'm so sorry. Everything's great. Everything's in order. Annette, forgive me. I've hardly paid any attention to you. I've been obsessed with my Kokoschka. Don't worry about it. The way I reacted? Very bad of me. Not at all. Something did occur to me in the bathroom. Yes. Perhaps we skated too hastily over. I mean, what I mean is... Well, go on, Annette. Please, go on. An insult is also a kind of assault. Well, of course it is. Well, that depends, Michael. Well, yes, it does depend. Benjamin's never shown any sign of violence. He wouldn't have done that without a reason. He got called a snitch. I'm sorry. Yes. As long as there aren't any statements from the victims. We don't want any victims. I don't want you being quoted alongside victims. A blanket denial and if necessary, attack the newspaper. They'll fax you a copy of the press release, Murray. If anyone calls me a snitch, I'm liable to get annoyed. I mean, unless it's true. Excuse me. I mean, suppose it's justified. My son is a snitch. Of course not. I was just joking. Yours is as well. That's how it's going to be. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean ours is as well? Well, he did give you Benjamin's name. Because we insisted. Michael, this is besides the point. What's the difference? Whether you insist or not, you get, he gave you the name. Uh, uh, Annette. Annette what? You think my son is a snitch? I don't think anything. Well, if you don't think anything, don't say anything. Stop making these insinuations. Let's stay calm, Annette. Michael and I are making an effort to be reasonable and moderate. Not that moderate. Oh, really? Um, what do you mean? Moderate on the surface. I, I really have to go, Woof Woof. All right, go. Go on and be a coward. Annette, right now I'm risking my most important client. So this responsible parent routine just- My son has lost two teeth, two incisors. Yes, yes, I think we all got that. One of them for good. He'll have new ones. We'll get him new ones. Better ones. It's not as if he bursts an eardrum. We're making a mistake not to take into account the origin of the problem. There's no origin. There's just an 11-year-old child hitting someone with a stick. Uh, armed with a stick. Wait, we withdrew that word. You withdrew it because we objected to it. And we withdrew it without protest. A word specifically designed to rule out error or clumsiness, to rule out childhood. I'm not sure I'm able to take much more of this tone oh, of voice. You and I have had trouble seeing eye to eye from the start. There's nothing more infuriating than to be attacked for something you yourself consider a mistake. The word armed was inappropriate, so he changed it. Although, if you want to stick to the strict definition of the word, its use is far from inaccurate. Benjamin was insulted and he reacted. If I'm attacked, I defend myself. Especially if I find myself alone confronted by a gang. Wow, it seems puking sure has perked you up. Do you have any idea how crude that sounds? Listen, listen, we all mean well, all four of us, I'm sure. Why let these minor irritants, these pointless aggravations, push us over the edge? Michael, that's enough! If all we are is moderate on the surface, let's forget it! No, 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 no! I refuse to allow myself to slide down that slope! What slope? That shitty slope those two little bastards have perched us on! There! I said it! <laughs> I'm not sure Ronnie has the same outlook. Veronica! Oh, sorry. So now Henry's a little bastard, is he? You know what? That's the last straw! Right. Well, I really have to go. <laughs> Me too. Go! Go on! I, I give up! Wait. Hello? Oh, Mom. No, 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 no. We're with some friends, but go on. Tell me about it. Yeah? Uh-huh. Do whatever the doctor wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait. They've given you Antro? Wait a minute, Mom. Mom, wait a minute. Mom, do don't go anywhere. Antro's your crap, isn't it? My mom's taking it. Thousands of people take it. All right, you stop taking that stuff right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mom, Mom, do you hear? Immediately. Don't argue, I'll explain later. Yes, tell Dr. Parolo I'm forbidding you to take it. 
Wait, wait, why glow in the dark? That's completely ridiculous. All right, all right, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Lots of love, bye. I'll call you, oh my God. She's running to glow in the dark crutches so she doesn't get knocked down by a truck as if someone in her condition should be strolling down to BQE in the middle of the night. They've given her antro for her blood pressure. Well, if she takes it and stays normal, I'll have her called as a witness. Didn't I have a scarf? There it is. You know what? I don't appreciate your cynicism. If my mother displays the most minor symptoms, I'm starting a class action lawsuit. Oh, that'll happen anyway. Well, I would hope so. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Novak. Behaving well gets you nowhere. Courtesy is a waste of time. It weakens you and undermines you. Right. Come along, Annette. Enough preaching and sermons for today. You know what? Go on, go on. But can I say one thing before you guys leave? It's pretty clear that, uh, what's his face? Benjamin? There are mitigating circumstances. When you murdered that hamster? Wait, murdered? Yes. I murdered the hamster? Yes. You've done your best to make us feel guilty, but your virtue went straight out the window once you decided to be a killer. I absolutely did not murder that hamster. Worse, you left it shivering with terror in a hostile environment. That poor hamster is bound to be eaten by a dog or a rat. Okay, you know what? That that is true. It is true. Wait, what do you mean it's true? It's true. What do you expect me to say? It's appalling what must have happened to that poor creature. No, no, no. I thought that hamster would be happy to be liberated. I thought it would go running down the gutter, jumping for joy. Well, it did it. And you abandoned it. I can't touch those things. For fuck's sakes, Ronnie. You know I'm very incapable of touching the entire species. He does have a phobia of rodents. That's right. I'm afraid of rodents. I'm terrified of snakes. Anything close to the ground, I don't want it near me. So that's the end of it. And you, why didn't you go look for it? Because I had no idea what had happened. Michael didn't tell us, me or the children, that the hamster had gone missing until the following morning. I went out immediately. Immediately. I walked around the block. I even went down to the basement. Veronica, I find it intolerable to be on trial all of a sudden for this hamster saga, which you seem fit to reveal. <laughs> it's a personal matter, and it's got nothing to do with the present situation. And it's nobody else's business but our own. And I find it incomprehensible to be called a killer in my own home. What does your home have to do with it? My home, the doors of which I have opened up. The doors of which I have opened up while our arms went open in the hopes of reconciliation to people who ought to be grateful for it. It's wonderful the way you keep patting yourself on the back. Don't you feel any guilt? I feel no guilt so whatsoever. I'm ecstatic that creature is gone. I always found it repulsive. Michael, that's ridiculous. What's ridiculous? Have you gone crazy as well? There's some beats up Henry and I get shit on because of a hamster? You behaved very badly with that hamster. You can't deny it. Oh, fuck that hamster. Oh, you won't be able to say that to your daughter this evening. You know what? Bring her on. I'm not going to let myself be told how to behave by some nine-year-old snot nose. 100% behind you there. Pathetic. Careful, Veronica. You be very careful. I've been completely restrained up until now, but I'm about two inches away from crossing that line. And what about Henry? What about Henry? Isn't he upset? If you remember, Henry has other problems. Henry was less attached to Nibbles. God, it was a stupid name as well. If you feel no guilt, why do you expect our son to feel any? Let me tell you something. I'm up to here with these idiotic discussions. We tried to be nice. We bought tulips. My wife passed me off as a liberal. But I am not a member of polite society. What I am, and what I've always been, is a damn Neanderthal! <laughs> Aren't we all? No. No. <coughs> I'm sorry. We're not all Neanderthals. Well, not you, obviously. No, not me. Thank God. No, not you, Darjee. Not you. You're a fully evolved woman. You're stain resistant. Why are you attacking me? I'm not attacking you. Quite the opposite. Yes, you are. You're attacking me. You know you are. You organized this little shindig. I just let myself get recruited. You let yourself be recruited? Yes. That's detestable. Not at all. You stand up for civilization. That's completely to your credit. Exactly. I'm standing up for civilization. And it's lucky that there are people who are prepared to do that. You think it's a better idea to be a Neanderthal? Come on now. Come on. Is it normal to criticize someone for not being a Neanderthal? No one's saying that. No one's criticizing you. Yes! They are! Oh, they're not. What are we supposed to do? Sue you, not speak to one another, and try to slaughter each other with insurance claims? Stop it, Ronnie. Stop what? You're blowing things a little out of proportion. I don't give a shit! You force yourself to rise above petty-mindedness, and you end up humiliated and completely on your own. Yes. Let them prove it. 
prove it. But if you ask me, don't answer at all. You know what? We're always on our own everywhere. You know, who wants a little bit of rum? Murray, I'm in a meeting. I'm going to have to call you back. So, you see I'm with a man who's completely and totally negative. Who's negative? Oh, I am. <laughs> this was the worst idea. We never should have arranged this meeting. I told you. You told me? Yes. You told me you didn't want to have this meeting? I think I told you I didn't think it was a good idea. It was a good idea. Oh, please. You know what? Anybody? You told me it wasn't a good idea, Michael? I think so. You think so? I wouldn't mind a drop. Didn't you have to go? I could manage a small glass. We've come this far. You look me in the eye and tell me we weren't in full agreement about this, Michael. Calm down, Veronica. Calm down. This is pointless. Who stopped anyone from touching the cobbler this morning? Who said, let's keep the rest of the cobbler for the Raleigh's? Who said it? That was nice. What does that have to do with anything? What do you mean? What does to do with it? Fight people, you invite people. Oh, you're a liar. You're a liar. He's a liar. You know, speaking personally, my wife had to drag me here. When, when you grow up with this John Wayne-ish sense of virility, you don't want to solve these kinds of problems with a bunch of yakking. This wrong <laughs> is terrific. I thought your model was Spartacus. Same family. Analogous. Analogous. Are there any lengths you won't go to to humiliate yourself, Michael? Obviously, it was pointless dragging him here. <laughs> what were you hoping for, Wolf Wolf? Some, it's true, it's a ridiculous name. Some kind of glimpse into universal harmony. I love this rom. Oh, it's great, isn't it? English mm. Harbor, 10 years old, direct from Antigua. And the tulips. Whose idea was that? I said, it's a shame the tulips are finished. I didn't say, let's go down to the Korean deli at the crack of dawn. Don't work yourself up into the state, Veronica. It's crazy. The tulips were his idea. Entirely his idea. And aren't we allowed a drink? Yes, Veronica and I would like one too. By the way, it's pretty amusing. Someone descended from Spartacus and John Wayne. Who can't even pick up a mouse? Will you shut up? Just shut up about the damn answer. <laughs> shut up. You're right. It's laughable. <laughs> what about her? I don't think she needs any. Oh, give me a drink, Michael. No. Michael. No. What's the matter with you, Michael? Just... All right, all right, there. Take it, take it. Drink, drink. Who cares? <laughs> Is alcohol bad for you? It's wonderful. Yes, well, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, um, Mr. Raleigh? Alan. Alan. We're not exactly soulmates, you and me. But you see, I live with a man who's decided once and for all that life is second rate. It's very difficult living with a man who comforts himself with that thought, who doesn't want anything to change, who can't work up any, well, enthusiasm about anything. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit about any of that. You have to believe... Well, you have to believe in the idea of improvement, don't you? He does, he's the last person you should be telling all of this. I'll talk to whoever I goddamn well please. God, who the hell is this now? Yes, Mom. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. I say he's fine. Yeah, he's lost a couple of teeth, but he's fine. Yes, Mom, he's in pain. Yeah, he's in a lot of pain right now, Mom, but the pain will pass. Mom, 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 I'm busy. I'll, I'll call you back. He's still in pain? No. Then why worry your mother? He can't help himself. He always has to worry her. Right, that's enough, Veronica. What's with all this psychodrama? Veronica, are we ever interested in anything but ourselves? Of course, we would like to believe in the possibility of improvement, of which we could be our own architect and which would be in no way self-serving. But does such a thing exist in life? Some people drag their feet. It's their strategy. Others refuse to acknowledge the passing of time and drive themselves demented. What difference does it make? You're writing a book on Darfur, yes? I could see you saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to choose a massacre. What else does history consist of? And I'm going to write about it. You do what you can to save yourself. I'm not writing a book to save myself. You, you haven't read it. You don't know anything about it. it makes no difference. Oh, terrible stink of Kuros. Mm, terrible. You've certainly laid it on. I'm sorry. Not your fault. Oh, I was the one spraying like a lunatic. Anyway, why can't we take things more lightly? 
Why does everything have to be so exhausting? You think too much. Women think too much. There is an original remark. I bet that one threw you for a loop. Think too much. I, I don't know what that means. And I don't see the point of existence without some sort of moral conception of the world. See what I have to live with. <laughs> shut up! You know what? Just shut up! I detest this pathetic complacency! You know what? You disgust me! Come on, Ronnie. Have a sense of humor. I don't have a sense of humor, and I don't intend on acquiring one. So what I always say is, marriage is the most terrible ordeal God can inflict on anyone. <laughs> Great. Marriage and children. <laughs> There's no need for you to share your views with us, Michael. As a matter of fact, I find it slightly indecent. That's not going to worry him. I mean, you don't agree? These observations are besides the point. Alan, say something. He's entitled to his opinions. Yes, but he doesn't have to broadcast them. <laughs> well, yes, perhaps. We don't give a damn about their marriage. We're here to settle a problem to do with our children. We don't give a damn about their marriage. Yes, but... But what? There's what do a you connection. mean? There is a connection. There's a connection? Of course there's a connection. There's a connection between Henry having his teeth broken and our marriage? Well, obviously. We don't get it. Okay, listen, listen. Children consume our lives and then destroy them. Children drag us towards disaster. It's unavoidable. So when you see those laughing couples casting off into the sea of matrimony, you tell yourself, oh, they just have no idea. Those poor fools, they have no idea that they're happy. You see, nobody tells you anything when you start off. Okay, so I have this old school buddy, and he's about to have a child with his new girlfriend. And I told him, a child at our age? Are you insane? The 10 or 12 good years we have left in our life before we die of a cancer or stroke, and you're going to screw yourself up with some brat? You don't really <laughs> believe what you're saying. Oh, he does. Oh, of course I believe it. <clears throat> Worse even. Yes! You're demeaning yourself, Michael. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> You can see it only encourages him. Please help yourself, help yourself. Exceptional, isn't it? Mm. Exceptional. You know, could I offer you a cigar? No! No cigars! Oh, too bad. You're not intending to smoke a cigar, Alan. I'll do what I like, Annette. If I feel like smoking a cigar, I'll accept the cigar. If I'm not smoking, it's because I don't want to upset Veronica, who has already completely lost it. She's right. Stop sniveling. When a woman cries, a man is immediately forced to his worst excesses, of which, I'm sorry to say, Michael's point of view is entirely accurate. Yes, Serge, go ahead. Put New York, the date, and the exact time. This is obscene. Whatever time you send it, it has to look piping fresh, hot out of the oven. No, we're not surprised, we condemn. Surprised is feeble. This goes on from morning to night, from morning to night. That cell phone makes mince meat of our lives. It, just a minute. Annette, this is very important. It's always more important. Anything happening somewhere else is always more important. Go ahead. Yes. Not, not procedure, maneuver. A maneuver time two weeks before the annual meeting. In the streets, at dinner, he doesn't care where. A, a paper. Put a paper in quotes. I give up. Total surrender. I want to throw up again. Oh, where's the dishpan? I don't know. You just have to quote me. This is... It's merely a completely unrequired description of my client to undermine him. Oh, there it is. Please, you know what? Help yourself. D to uh, un undermine him and manipulate Everything's share prices. Everything's all right. We're fully equipped. To manipulate share prices, says Alan Rowley, head counsel of the Wrens Pharma Company. AP, Reuters, General Press, Medical Press, the whole nine yards. <coughs> She wants to throw up again. What's the matter with you? I'm touched by your concern. It's upsetting me. I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. Oh, please, Annette, let's not us start now. Just because they're fighting, just because their marriage is screwed, it doesn't mean we have to compete. What right do you have to say that our marriage is screwed? Who gave you permission? They just read it to me. Manipulation, manipulate share prices, it's on its way. Wasn't me who said it, it was Frank. Michael. Michael, sorry. I forbid you to stand in any kind of judgment over our relationship. Then don't stand in judgment over my son. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Your son injured ours. They're young. They're kids. Kids have always given each other a good beating during recess. It's a law of life. No, no, it isn't. Of course it is. Okay. You have to go through some kind of apprenticeship before violence gives way to what's right. 
originally, let me remind you, might was right. Possibly in prehistoric times, not in our society. <laughs> our society. Please explain our society. No, you're exhausting me. This, this conversation... Exhausting. You see, Veronica, I believe in the god of carnage. He has ruled uninterruptedly since the dawn of time. You're interested in Africa, aren't you? <clears throat> Feeling bad? Don't worry about me. I am worried. Everything's fine. As a matter of fact, I just came back from the Congo. Over there, little boys are taught to kill when they're eight years old. During their childhood, they may kill hundreds of people with a, with a machete, with a kalash, with a, with a thump gun. So when my son picks up a bamboo rod and hits his playmates in Cobble Hill Park and breaks his teeth or two, I'm less likely to be susceptible to horror and indignation. You're wrong. A thump gun? Yes, that's what they call a grenade launcher. <coughs> Are you all right? Perfectly. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with her? It's just bile. It's nothing. Don't lecture me about Africa. I know all about Africa's martyrdom. I've been steeped in it for months. I don't doubt it. Anyway, the, the ICC has already conducted an inquiry on Darfur. You think I don't know about that? Uh, don't get her started on that, for God's sake. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I am starting to like you. Well, I don't like you. You see, uh, she's a supporter of peace and stability in our you world. You know what? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. We're living in America. We're not living in Kinshasa. We're living in America according to the principles of Western society. What goes on in Cobble Hill Park is a part of Western society, of which, you know what? If it's all the same to you, I'm happy to be a member. So I'm guessing beating up on your husband is one of those principles, isn't it? <laughs> Michael, this is going to end badly. She threw herself on you in such a frenzy. If I were you, I'd be flattered. Oh, I'll do it again. He's making fun of you. Do you realize that? I don't give a shit. I am not making fun. On the contrary, society decrees we should uh, not, we should control our impulses, but sometimes it's good not to control them. You, you wouldn't want to be singing Ave Maria while you're having sex. Where can you find this from? Oh, that vintage? I honestly doubt you can. Mm. Thump gun. <laughs> Thump gun. You're right. <laughs> That's right, thump gun. Why don't you just say grenade launcher? Because thump gun is correct. It's like you say Kalesh instead of Kaleshnikov. Who's this you? That's <laughs> enough, Annette. That's enough. The great warriors like my husband, you have to give them some leeway. They have trouble working up an interest in local events. True. Well, I don't see why. I don't see why. We're citizens of the world. I don't see why we should, you know. Give it the struggle, just because it's in our own backyard. Oh, Ronnie, do stop shoving these thoughts down our throat for the day. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> yes, all right, take out regrettable. A crude, a crude attempt to, that's it. You're right, this is excruciating. Otherwise, he approves the rest? Fine, fine, very good. What were we saying, thump gun? I was saying whether my husband likes it or not, that no one place is more important than another when it comes to exercising vigilance. Vigilance? Well, Annette, it's ridiculous to drink in the state you're in. What state? On the contrary. Vigilance. It's an interesting idea. Yes, no, no, no interviews before the circulation of the press release. Okay, that's it. I insist you break off this horrendous conversation. Absolutely not. The shareholders won't give a shit. Remind him the shareholder is king. Annette, what the? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, there. <laughs> oh, well done. You've gone, oh, my God. God. Insane. <laughs> the hairdryer, where's the hairdryer? You need to be locked up, you poor thing. I had everything on there. It took me hours to set up. Oh, my God, really, I don't understand you. That was completely irresponsible. Everything's on there my whole life. His whole life. <laughs> we might be able to fix it. <laughs> it's forget it. It's screwed. We'll take out the battery and the SIM card. Can you open it up? I don't know how. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> it's screwed. And 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 they think it's funny. And they think it's funny. <laughs> hey, there we are. 
You, Veronica, you should at least have the manners to not be laughing at this. My husband will have spent his entire afternoon blow drying. <laughs> Leave it, pal. Leave it. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> we'll have to wait a minute. You want to use our phone? You know, I have to say. Yes, what is it you have to say, Michael? You know, I can't even think of what to say. Well, if you ask me, everyone's feeling fine. If you ask me, everyone's feeling better. Everyone's much calmer, don't you think? Men are so wedded to their gadgets, it belittles them. It takes away all of their authority. A man needs to keep his hands free, if you ask me. Even an attache case is enough to put me off. There was a man once I found really attractive. Then I saw him with a square shoulder bag. A man shoulder bag, but that was it. There's nothing worse than a shoulder bag. Although there's also nothing worse than a cell phone. <laughs> a man ought to give the impression that he's alone, if you ask me. I mean that he's capable of being alone. I also have a Jane, John, John Wayne-ish idea of virility. And what was it he had? A Colt 45? A device for creating a vacuum? A man who can't give the impression that he's a loner has no texture. So Michael, are you happy? Is it somewhat fractured a little? What was it you said? I forgot the word. But in the end, everyone's feeling more or less all right, if you ask me. I should be the one to warn you. Rum drives you a little crazy. I've never felt more normal. Right. I'm starting to feel rather pleasantly serene. <laughs> That's wonderful. Rather pleasantly serene. Oh, and as for you, Darjeeling, I don't see what's to be gained by getting publicly smashed. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Take one, Alan. Relax. The guards are not to be smoked in this house. These are Cuban. Cohiba, Monte Cristo, <sighs> number three and number four. You can't smoke in a house with an asthmatic child. Who's asthmatic? Our son. Didn't stop you from buying a fucking hamster. It's true. If someone has asthma, keeping animals isn't recommended. Completely unrecommended. Even a goldfish can be risky. Okay, do I have to listen to this fatuous nonsense? Okay, you know what? I'm sorry. No doubt I'm the only one of us not feeling rather pleasantly serene. In fact, I've never been so unhappy. I think today is the unhappiest day of my life. Ronnie, drinking's all, drinking always makes you unhappy. Michael! Every word that comes out of your mouth is destroying me. I don't drink. I drink a mouthful of this shitty rum you're waving about as if you were showing the congregation the Shroud of Turin. I don't drink, and I bitterly regret it. You know what? It would be a relief to be able to take refuge in a little drop at every minor setback. My husband's unhappy as well. Look at him slumped. He looks as if someone left him by the side of the road. Oh, I think it's his unhappiest day of his life, too. Yes. I'm so sorry, Wolf Wolf. Okay, can you turn off that blow dryer? That thing is toast. Yeah, yes, yes. Mom, mom, it would kill, it's going to kill you. The medication is poison. Here, someone's going to explain it to you. Tell her. Tell her what? Everything you know about the crap that you're peddling. Uh, how are you, ma'am? What can he tell her? He doesn't know the first thing about it. <laughs> yes, and does it hurt? Oh, I see. Well, the operation will fix that. And how about the other leg? Oh, no, no. I'm not an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> she keeps calling me doctor. <laughs> doctor, this is grotesque. Hang up. But, I mean to say, uh, you, you aren't having any trouble with your balance? Oh, no, no, don't listen to any of that. All the same, it'd probably be a good idea for you to stop taking it for the time being. Until... Until you've had the chance to get comfortably through your operation. Oh, yes, you sound as if you're in very good shape. All right, all right, all right, come here. All right, Mom, is that... You hear it? You hear it? You hear it? Okay. Is that clear? Stop taking the medication. Mom, why do you always have to argue with me? Just stop taking it. Mom, do as you're told. I'll call you back. Lots of love from all of us. Oh my God, she's killing me. One pain in the balls after another. 
right then, what have we decided? Shall I come back this evening with Benjamin? No one seems to give a rat's ass anymore. All the same, I should point out that's what we're here for. Oh god, now I'm starting to feel nauseous. Where's the pan? That's enough. In my mind, there are wrongs on both sides. That's it, wrongs on both sides. Are you serious? What? Are you aware of what you're saying? I am, yes. Okay, our son Henry, to whom I was obliged to give two extra strength Tylenol to last night, is in the wrong? He's not necessarily in it. Oh my god, you know what? Fuck off! I've had quite enough of you. My purse! Alan! Oh my god, what's going on? Have they lost their shit? Alan, help! Alan, help! <laughs> she broke my compact in my spray bottle! Defend me! Why aren't you defending me? We're going. It's not as if I'm strangling her. What have I done to you? Okay, look, there are not wrongs on both sides. Don't mix up the victims with the executioners. Executioners? You're so full of shit, Veronica. With all this simplistic baloney, we're up to here with it. Okay, you know, I stand by everything I've said. Yes, yes, you stand by what you've said. You stand by what you've said. Your infatuation for a bunch of Sudanese people is bleeding into everything right now. I'm appalled. Why do you insist on showing yourself in this horrible light? Because I feel like it. I feel like showing myself in a horrible light. One day, you may understand the extreme gravity of what's going on in that part of the world, and you'll be ashamed of this inertia and your repulsive nihilism. Ooh, you're just wonderful, Darjeeling. You're the best of all of us. I am! Yes! Let's get out of here, Alan. These people are monsters. Stop it, Annette. No, I want to drink some more. I want to get bombed out of my mind. This bitch hurls my purse across the room and no one bats an eye. I want to get drunk. You already are. Why are you letting them call my son an executioner? You come to their house to settle things and you get insulted and bullied and lectured on how to be a good citizen of the planet? Our son did well to clout yours, and I wipe my ass with your Bill of Rights. You know what? A mouthful of rum and then bam, the real face appears. Look oh, I that. told you, didn't I tell you? What'd you tell him? That she was a phony. That woman is a phony. I'm sorry. <laughs> when did you tell him? Well, while you were in the bathroom. You'd known her for all of 15 minutes, and you could already tell she was a phony? Well, that's the kind of thing I pick up on right away. True. Well, I have an instinct for that kind of thing. And phony, what does that mean? I don't want to hear any more. Why are you putting me through this, Alan? Calm down, woof woof. She's someone who likes to smooth out the rough edges, period. She doesn't care any more than you do. She's all front. True. It's true. It's true. Wait, wait, are you saying it's true? They're right. You're right. They don't give a fuck. They haven't given a fuck since the beginning. And her too. You're so right. And you do, I suppose? Oh, well, let me say something, honey. In what ways do you care, Michael? You're much more authentic when you're showing yourself in a horrible light. To tell you the truth, the only person in this room who cares is Veronica, whose integrity, it has to be said, must be acknowledged. Don't acknowledge me. Don't acknowledge me. I care. I absolutely care. We only care about our own feelings, in that. You know, I saw your friend Jane Fonda on the TV last night. I was this close to joining the KKK. What do you mean, my friend? What does Jane Fonda have to do with this? You're the same breed. You're this category of woman, committed, problem solving. That's not what we like about women. What we like about women is sensuality, wildness, hormones. Women who make a song and dance about their <laughs> intuition depress us, even him. Poor Michael, your husband, he's depressed. Don't speak for me. Oh, who gives a flying fuck what you like about women? Where does this lecture come from, a man like you? Who could begin to give a fuck for your opinion? She's yelling. She's yelling like a stuck pig. What about her? Doesn't she yell when she said that little bastard had done what a cloud of our son? Yes, he did do well. At least he's not a sniveling little bitch. Yours is a snitch. Is that any better? Alan, let's go. What are we doing staying in this dump? Oh, there! Oh. That's what I think of your pathetic flowers, your hideous tulips! Oh. <laughs> it's the worst day of my life as well. Is this yours? Thanks. It's not broken, is it? No. What I always say is, um, leave it, pal. No, I. Yes, darling. Oh, good, good. 
Um, will you be able to do your homework at Annabelle's? No, no, darling, we haven't found her. Yes, I went all the way to the grocery store, but you know my love, Nipples is very resourceful. I think you have to have faith in her. You think she was happy in a cage? Daddy's very sad. He didn't mean to upset you. Yes, he will. Of course, he'll speak to him again. Listen, darling, we're worried enough already about your brother. She'll eat. She'll eat leaves. Acorns, horse chestnuts. She'll find things. She knows what food she needs. Worms, snails, uh, things that come out of trash cans. She's like us. She's omnivorous. <laughs> See you soon, sweetheart. You know, <laughs> chances are the creature's probably stuffing its face as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> no. What do we know? Thank you again for joining us and supporting theater at Rowan College of South Jersey. We do it on stage. <laughs>